There we go. All right. Hey, Coach, Um, with the additions to the COVID list, what are your plans to get the backups ready just in case you don't get some of those guys back? I mean, what every week, Philip, uh, we'll coach the entire roster. Everybody's got to be ready to go every Sunday. That, that hasn't changed. We'll deal with whatever obstacles thrown our way. And uh, when our guys have the right mindset. Uh, are you optimistic that you will get some of your players back? We'll have a chance, but they're, you know, we'll I'll deal with whatever realities they, they present to us. And um, you take it case by case. It's not going to be one size fits all. Um, obviously, everybody that's wasn't hibernating the last 48 hours. No, the CDC changed their um, their protocols. The league updated theirs. It's everything is, you know, as everything in life, you got to be able to adapt. So there's optimism that we can get some guys back. But again, it's case by case. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, today, Fourier was announced as the uh, player of the week. Could, could, um, you talk about his play and that him receiving that honor. Well, I think it. Uh, Shows what kind of season he's had and, and the impact he's had on, on a lot of football games for us. And certainly when you win and the team plays well, um, individual accolades usually follow. And uh, he's a great teammate. And it, it takes a team to go out there and win and, and to function as a defense. And Foye, uh, you know, he's he run the show back there. So uh, it's a good job by him. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Josh? Arthur, you mentioned Jalen Mayfield playing almost every snap as a rookie. What sort of progress has he made, and and what's maybe the next step for him as he, you begin to think about his second year sure. in his development? Yeah, um, you know, I think week after week, yeah, he's gotten better. Certainly, uh, some weeks present, you know, maybe maybe some more difficult matchups for him, but I think he's handled it. I think it's. Um, it's a tough job for a rookie to go in there and, and start on the offensive line. And uh, he's been consistent, like a lot of things, a lot of players and certainly rookies, there's, there's, there's areas to improve and certainly plays. I'm sure he wish he had back, but if you look at the whole body of work, uh, he's played, played decently well. I think he's got still, he's, he's a young guy and uh, you would think he would have a pretty good jump in year two. Is that the gen general track for offensive linemen? Is is there a general track for offensive line development that you feel like, you know, they, they hit their stride or they should be hitting their stride in year two or year three or at what point? In sure. I think the, certainly in any job, the you know, the more reps you get, the, the better off you should be. Uh, I think history normally proves that. Um, what excites me with guys like Jalen or Kyle is, is they are young. I mean, a lot of times I think when – take guys that may be a fifth year senior coming into the league at 24, 25, they may not have a big of a jump. Uh, you know, there's certainly always exceptions to that, Josh, but uh, obviously very optimistic with a guy like Jalen that he can continue to, to improve and, and to grow. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Michael. Hey, Arthur. Uh, are there any more additions to the COVID list for you guys today? Still working through that, Michael. I think the one thing that, uh, there's so much misinformation out there about it. So, you know, the timing of things, it's, it's, it's not a, again, I just deal with what, you know, the NFL, uh, the protocols that, you know, they provide for us. So guys can, can get tested at any point. So a lot of times when guys, you know, they may feel, uh, you know, they need to get tested and, and, and they should, and that's their, um, so it may not, it's not like you're going to have, like everybody has to test by, 6 30 a.m or 7 a.m so those are still coming in mike and uh i'm at Bassett, i'll update you as soon as we have it confirmed i just i have a hard time when to put somebody's information out there when we don't have it confirmed sure uh as far as quarterbacks go how do you are you let me rephrase are you doing anything different to try and kind of make sure or do everything you can to kind of make sure that matt stays off of that list are you guys changing anything in terms of what you do during the week with quarterbacks to make sure even if you have one guy available well so again goes back to this i know it's changing very rapidly so last year um it was a huge deal because of the close contacts and no vaccinations available um now it basically comes down to if somebody gets sick or they feel symptomatic and they want it and that i think what you're realizing with this variant Again, I don't want to claim that I'm any kind of expert on this. I'm just, you know, reading, try to read, uh, 
real medical advice, not, you know, some partisan fringe stuff on the internet. Um, clearly, we're dealing with a different variant and how contagious this is. Uh, we're certainly trying to mitigate our risk as best as possible. We've done that all year. Uh, I don't think anybody has a perfect solution right now. I think that's the one thing that's painfully obvious about the Omicron variant is, and you can read, you know, stories, or whatever, and um, they're trying to do the best they can with something that's severely contagious. So certainly we've mitigated our risk. I'm sure most teams around the league are. Uh, and then sometimes there's it's a virus that's pretty smart and there may be some inevitability to it. So you certainly try to protect yourself best you can at multiple spots. We'll do the same thing. And I imagine that's most teams are doing that, Mike. And John Madden passed away yesterday. I'm curious what your memories are, thoughts are about him how how he made it at all he influenced yeah. you at all so, certainly i would think in my generation um you know if you grew up and you you, you love football and like sports yeah certainly my first uh experience in learning who john madden was was from the video games and then you know you watching him and pat summerall and that felt like a big game every time they announced it uh, i certainly never met john uh he had an enormous impact on the national football league and he'll, he'll be missed um uh, but he had a he had a heck of an impact on the game. Appreciate it, mm -hmm. Tori. Yeah, you were talking about the kind of the optimism of feeling like you can potentially get some guys back. I mean, with these new protocols and you know only having to have like the asymptomatic guys isolating for like five days, is there any less of a worry now of getting guys back? Like feeling more optimistic as to how like the league and honestly society too is kind of handling these situations better than we have in the last two years? Yeah, there's definitely more optimism. Um, but I, I don't think it's fair if somebody goes on that list the same day that no two cases may be the same. You know, somebody may be, uh, depending on the symptoms they have and, you know, how quickly they, they may not be symptomatic. They may have somebody that has symptoms. And so you just got to take it case by case. But certainly you're way more optimistic than you were. Uh, just kind of ironic that we're playing Buffalo. Uh, different experience last year. When we were in Tennessee playing Buffalo. And the world was a different place. I think this virus has evolved. Uh, you know, the optimist in me is hoping that this slowly leads us out of the pandemic. But uh, maybe I'm just trying to be too optimistic here. But that's my hope. And, and kind of just talking about the game itself. I mean, uh, we all know about this this Buffalo pass defense. I mean, what what can you kind of say about this group and and kind of what you've just seen in the initial planning for for this week? Yeah, this is a uh, it's a good program. You know, there's been they, they know what they're looking for. Uh, I think this it shows they they've had a good vision um, with Sean McDermott. Brandon being their staffs, you know, I think this is what you're seeing with with competent leadership and consistency year over year, what they're drafting for, you know, not dissimilar to what Terry and I hope to build here. When you have a you have a strategy, you have a philosophy, you have some consistency. There's not a lot of knee jerk reactions. Um, and that's why they got a really good roster and they're really well coached and they know what they're looking for and, and they know what they're asked to do. I think they got two safeties that are really underrated. The impact they have on most games and uh, Poyer and Hyde, uh, you know, we've gone against these guys. I should say we I'm familiar with them in the terms of uh, coach against this group for a couple of years. Uh, and I have a ton of respect, ton of respect. They're, 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 it's a well-built team uh, top to bottom. Special teams, uh, the way their D-line plays, they, they roll, they'll roll multiple guys in there. Edmonds and Milano are two as good as inside backers they are in the league. Talked about Poyer and Hyde. I, I don't think they get enough respect how good they are. There's a reason they're they're ranked in the top of the league and certainly on the other side. you got an explosive offense. you got a great young quarterback that's tough, make every throw, and they've loaded up with guys that are core team players. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly? You mentioned your familiarity with them as, you know, your, from your past. How much does that help you pre preparing this team that doesn't have as much maybe – familiarity with the Bills being an uncommon opponent for the Falcons? Well, just like every week, you try to educate, get familiar with the opponent. Um, you know, a lot of our guys haven't played them, um, and I'm not going to be out there taking any snaps. So, you know, it's more important that they get uh, familiar with this group. Uh, there's a healthy respect, uh, but we're excited, and it should be a fun atmosphere up in Buffalo. I'm sure the weather will be uh, great, and um, we'll be ready to roll.
I was going to ask how the forecast maybe changes your game plan and what you've maybe seen in the past there, how, how you know that kind of goes. Yeah, I think, you know, you, it'll change every day. I know the lake effect that it can have coming off Lake Erie. Um, you know, wake up Sunday, you, you look at the forecast, but just expect the unexpected and uh, we'll control what we control. And certainly you got to make decisions, you know, based on the environment and, and the circumstances there. I know everybody saw that what happened you know, that New England game up there and the, the way the wind was blowing, but that happens and we'll have to adjust. But again, we're excited. If they tell us to go play wherever, we're excited for the opportunity, whether it's snow, rain, sleet, sun, whatever. We're ready. To, we'll be ready to roll. Do you have any follow-ups? Yes. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, any news on the uh, uh, reports of Dez, Dez Hitchin, Kitchens um, maybe going to Virginia? And then we need to get a, a Ridley update if there's one available. Okay. Well, um, in terms of Dez, um, I think it's a credit to him and, and the staff that, uh, you know, people are interested. Um, again, he, if he's got an opportunity, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the season. Um, but Des is a fantastic football coach. Um, you can just copy and paste my Ridley update from last week. So <laughs> is that for good to go? Is that uh, is that? Yeah, for, yeah, uh, I think that yeah that clears my list out today. Yes, sir. Oh, you they, got? Oh, come on, D-Led. Well, they asked about the first year. Uh, we got Foyer. Um, well, I do have something else. Then um, okay. I didn't use this one. Seven games, Matt Ryan hasn't passed for 700 yards. Um, that's the first time since 2010. Uh, I don't know what that's a product of, um, and so I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to ask you about it. Is that just the formula? Is that the mix that you all have been getting that has uh, led to – you know, um, you know, maybe not getting the stats that we've seen him get in the past. Say that stat again. Uh, seven games without passing for 300 yards. Got 297 in Tampa Bay. But um, the last game was the Saints game. And, um, you know, I'll look at the records, too, there through over that stretch. But the last stretch was 2010, like his third year. Uh, you know, and he's yeah. pretty regularly been, been slinging it. For what was the record in 2010? Huh? What was the record in 2010? Uh, they went to the playoffs, lost to the Giants, I think 11 and 5. Yeah. So, what we're trying to focus on, D led, is, is winning games. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what you'll see year over year as you continue to build it, you know, some games you find different ways to win. I think when, um, I think when you, you, you lose a lot of games and you're looking to sell optimism somewhere, and sometimes your stats can be padded, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, that's where you get a lot of high volume, two minute uh, yards and catches. Okay. Um, I'm concerned with wins, uh, and I think as we continue to improve every year, I think it naturally follows. The better you are, then it's kind of what the trajectory that happened in Tennessee year over year. And then you can sit there and say, "Oh, okay, look, you want to see a constant improvement," and that's what you'll see here. Uh, ultimately, it's about winning, and that's what we focus on. So. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of players and a lot of rationalization year over year when you don't win enough games and you're you're looking for something to say, hey, look, we passed for 300 yards, but we lost by 21. Mm -hmm. That's how and, I feel about that. Okay, and also you have a chance to join uh, Jim Mora and Mike Smith as a coach to lead the team to the playoffs in their first year. Um, any thoughts on that? And um, Sean McDermott said that uh, you know, their first year up there, him and Brandon, it was about getting the people right and the people in place. How important was that for you and Terry, you know, and uh, trying to, you know, start your first year out here? Yeah, um, it's 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 really important, d and that's what you're finding out. You know, we understand where we're trying to go uh, short term and long term. Um, continue to, to, to find the right, right guys here, the right culture. I, I would argue that we're, you know, we're beginning to learn how to win. Uh, it hasn't been perfect, and we know there's a lot of work to do, and they're continuing to, to do, uh, we'll continue to do. Uh, we're just glad we're, we're still playing a meaningful game. Um, it's a big game for us. Um, again, the circumstances were completely different when, and I think Jim Mora and Mike Smith are terrific football coaches, but that's why all these comparisons are tough. Uh, completely different landscape. Those guys, first year, the teams, you know, to what, our circumstances were in 2021. Um, 
it, it would be awesome if we could do that, D Led. Uh, but it won't matter. Nothing, nothing matters unless we find a way to go beat the Buffalo Bills up in Buffalo. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Josh. I'm good. Thank you. Michael. Yeah, I did want to ask something about Josh Allen. You guys face a lot of quarterbacks we can move this year. How is he different than maybe some of those other guys? And, and how does that maybe become more challenging or, or I mean, different? be challenged, I guess, than yeah. uh, some of those guys you played. Yeah, he's a completely different player. Jo- Josh is a guy that can make every throw on the field. Um, I mean, gee, I mean, damn near could throw the ball out of the, you know, out of the stadium. Um, like those guys you see in those YouTube trick videos. I mean, he's got, they make every throw. He's big. He's tough. You can tell his teammates love him. Uh, you know, I could see why they drafted him and why they, you know, built around him. Um, he can extend plays hard to tackle so you know as long as he's back there I imagine they feel pretty good about their chances week after week uh but yeah he's he'll be a challenge there's different challenges you know it's it's not he's not the same as some of the other running quarterbacks but certainly he can run and he's showed it on tape I mean one of the few guys uh that actually will go in there and they run some kind of quarterback gap schemes with him and he'll go in between the tackles that's different than other running quarterbacks so we got our work cut out for us, but uh, like I said, we're excited about the challenge. We will go out there and and be ready to roll when they kick the ball off Sunday at one. When he was coming out, were you, what, did you anticipate this was going to be the type of player he was when you when y'all were evaluating quarterbacks back then, or or was that a different type of year for you guys as far as quarterbacks go back in Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, I saw him when on uh, uh, looked at uh, one of the brothers, Hollister, uh, I believe his. The year before he came out, so you could see the talent on the film. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people like what happens when when quarterbacks that, that are successful. People have a lot of revisionist history. I'm sure we go back and pull up the, the freezing cold takes from a lot of people. I think he's a good player. Um, they've done a terrific job with him, and, he, and and Josh has too. So, uh, and the last thing, I have, as far as Tajay Sharp goes, do you anticipate him being back this week, or is that we'll just have to see? Uh, Mike, as you said, see, there's a lot, a lot of unknown. I know it's going to drive D-Led crazy with the injury reports, but it is what it is. Uh, we're, like I said, these are different times and circumstances change every day. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hmm. Tori? Yeah, just one more for me. Um, I was actually watching Grady's mic'd up from this past Sunday, and he essentially he said at one point, like, damn, y'all can't block anybody else, and there were, like, three guys on him. This is probably a question for Dean, and I'll probably ask it of him tomorrow, too, but how often are you actually seeing opposing offenses slide the protection to Grady just to account for who he is and what he can do? Yeah, I think he, right now, I mean, the way we're constructed um, and based on – the way Grady plays and and you know his reputation, I think people account for him in protection. Um, we also move him around Tory a little bit too, and um, but yeah, I mean, I, if if you're playing us, you're certainly going to account for him in your protection schemes. Cool, thank you, Miles. Oh, got you with the mute. There's a, there's usually two of Zoom, Miles. I'm good on my end. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 don't don't talk you out of the question because of that. Now I do feel like I'm back in 2020. <laughs> Kelly, anything on your end? All right. Thanks, guys. All right, thank y'all.